I recently published a report called The Future of the Social Web, and I interviewed 24 companies like MySpace, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Amiibo, and, the, and Microsoft to find out what do you think is going to happen in the next five years. Well, you know what? Nobody could tell me past four. It's just moving so quickly we couldn't see it. But when we boil it down, there's actually five eras of the social web. The first era is called the era of social relationships. And we've already done that, and it's a mature stage. This is when people connect to each other and share information, like you would on LinkedIn Answers or on Facebook or even MySpace. Now, the second era is the era of social functionality. And we entered this era about two years ago. And this is when social networks become like operating systems. What does that mean? It means that third-party companies and developers can build applications and widgets and put them on top of social networks. Let me give you an example. Like Facebook uh, F8 platform. People built a Scrabble game, Scrabulous, or um, um, XMe, which you can throw silly things to people. Or in LinkedIn, you can share documents with people. This is an example of social functionality. People are getting more things done by working together. The third era, which we've just entered, and this is where we're starting to look towards the future, is the era of social colonization. And new technologies are coming around, like Facebook Connect or OpenID, that allow the, every single web page on the web, uh, in, on the internet, to be social. And this means that every single product, every product page, even if a company or media site doesn't choose to participate, will be social. As you walk around the city, you can access your mobile device and find out what do your friends think about that restaurant, and what do you think. And this impacts how your people are going to make decisions. So that's an unstoppable, unstoppable force that's coming. Uh, the fourth era is the era of social context. So now that you have this ID, this profile that you can take with you, maybe it's a Microsoft ID, maybe it's a Google one or Facebook, one that you trust, in the future, you can choose to share pieces of that in your profile, your information, to different websites or companies or e-commerce sites in exchange for a more personalized experience. So I can share, hey, I'm an Asian male in the Bay Area in his mid-30s, and I like these types of things. So if I go to a big site like eBay or, uh, or Craigslist, it could serve up information without me even having to register. Information becomes a lot more relevant, and so does advertising. Uh, and then the last era is the era of social commerce. Essentially, this is when communities start to look and behave like companies and brands on their own. Well, we've already seen uh, communities do group buys, where they can work together to bring down the price. That's just the start. In the future, they'll start to, start to identify their pains, and then they're going to start to collaborate amongst themselves and identify what should the ideal product look like to meet and need, uh, those pains. In the farthest context of this, uh, these communities will actually go to brands with a spec in hand, here's the type of bicycle, or this mountain bike that we want you to build. Would you like to bid for our business? And we'll be giving it to you and your competitors. Let us know, and we'll, maybe we'll buy it. So the future of the social web, just to tie things up, um, the power is shifting to the communities. So for brands to be really relevant in this, they need, need to join those communities and participate as quickly and as fast as they can.